So, some time ago, I have recorded this video, and uh, this beautiful guy, Alex Z75515, uh, has left a very valid comment that um, this approach is very nice, that uh, it's very hard to test without like copying the error message uh, or the exception code. So, I wanted to address that and add something extra on top of it. So this is like a project that um, I have, and let me just uh, you know quickly add a new namespace. Uh, so let's do something like core, and this will map to source core, and let us create this directory. All right, so instead of here, we'll create our exceptions folder, and let's create our um, you know internal exception. So this internal exception has to obviously extend the base exception of PHP. So what we were doing previously is that, uh, let's just use our user as an example. Let's create exceptions folder here. And let's create a new exception. I know, let's just call that user exception. So previously we would just do, you know, extends internal exception. Here we would have like a public static function something bad, and we would return new self uh, with the status code and uh, our message. And then what we would do is we would go to our exception handler, and inside of here we would do a renderable. Uh, we would catch whenever an internal exception happens, and we would just do something like that. And that's basically what we had in the previous episode. Now we can extend that a bit further. So the first thing that we can do is we can create a new exception code. And this would be an enum. And this can map to like an int, for example. And inside of here, we could uh, basically register all of our application's exception code. So maybe we have some sort of billing system. And, uh, you know, we would show like no subscription and uh, we could agree on some sort of naming convention. So, for example, all billing related exception codes would be um, prefix with 10 and then there would be like three spaces. So we have some some space to actually add these values. Um, so we could also assume that, you know, we could do um, you know, anything with, that starts with like nine. 90, uh, that would be like no access. And based on these assumptions, uh, we could create a very simple function called get status code, which would be able to, you know, based on our schema, uh, basically return us some status code that would be proper for this request. So the way we could do it is we could do value equals this value and then simply return match on true. And if value is greater or equal to 90,000, then we can return 403. And uh, if value is greater or equal to 10,000, we could return 400. And by default, we could return 500. So this way, we could generalize our exceptions. And also, like, you know, uh, if we ever want to, like, overwrite something, so, you know, if value is equal to 10,002, then we could do something else. So we can always override that. So with that in mind, what we could do here is that in our internal exception, we would create like a new helper. So we could call it uh, simply like new. And inside of here, we could pass a couple of things. So we could pass the exception code from here. And we could also do like a series of uh, things that could be optional, and if provided, they will override the default. So uh, we could do a message, we could do like a description, we'll get to why in a second, and we could obviously have like a status code, um, and that would be also null by default. So now, now inside of here, uh, we could do exception equals new static, and because this extends the base, uh, the base PHP exception, we need to provide the the message and we need to provide the status code. So uh, let's provide the message and let's provide the status code. Uh, this can be null, which we'll fix in a second. So like, for example, for the status code, uh, we can do status code or 
code, get status code. And we could obviously do the same for a message. So we could go code, get message. Now let's implement that. So this obviously needs to return a string or maybe a null or a string. Um, and we can utilize like our translations, for example. So, um, you know, we could do something like translation equals exceptions that we can use that exceptions that this value, that message. And then we could actually extract the key. So the key would be this. And now, you know, uh, if the key is equal to the translation, this will basically means that this was never specified. So in that example, we could return something like, uh, you know, something general, something went wrong. And otherwise we could just return the translation. So now this would work, but maybe we want some additional functionality. Maybe you want to provide some helpful description alongside the message. So we could basically replicate this entire function and we could do something like get message, and instead of doing the message key, we could just do description. Uh, get description. And we could do no additional description provided. So now our exception needs this additional place to store our description. First, let's just return that exception. So uh, we have an instance of that exception. And it's really important to do new static and not new self, because if you do new self, if you call that function from the child, it will create an instance of the parent. If you do new static, it will create an instance of the children. Exactly what we need. But what we could do is we could basically, you know, create a couple of properties here. So we could do description. We could do exception code, internal code. And now we could simply do exception internal code equals code and exception description equals description or code get description. This is pretty fun, but why are we doing that? Well, now in our handler, we are able to provide a bit more information to the end user of like our API or something. So, uh, you know, now we can do exception get internal, uh, internal. Oh, we made them protected. So, um, yeah, we should probably add like two helpers. Uh, so let's just do public function get internal code. And this will simply return this internal code. And we could do get description. And this can simply return this description. So now we can uh, do get internal code right here. And, you know, we can do something like status is equal to error. And the code is equal to code value. So that would be like our internal exception identifier. Then we could do message, which would be exactly this. We could do description, which would be exception get description. And so maybe we could provide like a link. So uh, this would probably come from the code. So we can do code get link. And we obviously need to add this. So maybe uh, this could simply return a uh, route to docs exceptions and we can pass uh, codes. So it's this value and this will return a string. Now we would obviously need to create that. Uh, just for now, I will create it right here. So let's just do docs exceptions code. And we can just do function code and simply return code and let's just give it the name docs exceptions. Okay. So now in our user exception, instead of doing that, uh, maybe we could, you know, create a new exception code. So maybe user already exists or something like that. We'll just do 11 and three O's. And now in our user exception, we could simply to return self new and pass exception code is already exists. This should return a static, not self. 
And now, um, now we have this uh, really nice abstraction. So let's just do user already exists. And uh, what we can do is we can simply do, uh, you know, maybe x equals modules user exceptions user exception. Let's just do user user already exists. Okay, and we can see, you know, something went wrong and 400 and whatnot. Um, but it's in fact uh, an instance of user exception, so that's great. Now, um, if we create our lang directory, which I believe is now lives in the top level, and we create our exceptions.php class, and here we can return an array. We'll just do one for user already exists. So we'd have our 1100, 1100, uh, 11,000, I'm sorry, message user already exists. And description would be, you know, uh, something that describes the error message. So a user with this, I know, email has already been created. You cannot create duplicates. Okay, so now if we restart Tinker, Okay, so I just published that. It should be in the EN directory. Um, I just had the wrong structure. If we do this, we can see that the user already exists, which is great. Um, now let's just create like a, like a test endpoint. So we'll just do route get test. And inside of here, we could simply do, you know, um, show user exception, user already exists. So when we hit that endpoint, we can see that we have gotten our error message. It's very nice. It has the message, it has the description, it has a link to documentation that explains the error. You obviously need to build that first. It won't be for free, but uh, you can use some nice code gen from the, <clears throat> from the translations and your enum to create that. Now, the last thing we need is to look at the testing because that was the original uh, point that the commenter has mentioned, I think, Alex. So now in our test, we can simply do <coughs> search status 400 and we can also do a search JSON path equal to exception code, is already exists value. So like that's approach number one. If we run the tests, it will pass. So that's approach number one. We can also like add a helper so it will validate that all of the that the entire structure is proper. So we can do like assert equals canonizing and like pass all of the values and whatnot. Um the other approach, which is probably better, is to just call that. And we can do without exception handling. And we can do this expect exception object, and then we can pass user exception already exists, um, which if we run, will pass. Now, if we were to go to our web.php and let's create another one. So let's do, you know, whatever, whatever. It's not really that important. Let's just limit exceed it. Uh, it doesn't belong here, but it's just for testing purposes. Uh, now let's do, uh, let's do test. Let's run the test again. And we can see that these are not equal because they are they are different, right? They have different messages and whatnot. So this is like a very nice addition to what we had previously. Let me know what do you think? Let me know how would you change that? I think one of the problems that we'll run into here is that we'll have so many of these that it will be very hard to manage. So maybe splitting that into like separate groups. So there is an enum for for a given group or like a class or whatnot uh, could be helpful. But yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments and thank you so much for watching.